It was an afternoon in March 2010. A security camera captures the end of a Houston police pursuit. Alleged burglar Chad Holly tries to make a run for it. He's clipped by a police car. On the ground, he clearly puts his hands out in the surrender pose, then folds his arms behind his head. What happens next is shocking. The first officer stumps on his head, and then four other officers repeatedly kick him. Then one officer lands five separate kicks. After about 20 seconds of being beaten, another officer lands five heavy punches. Then another officer stumps on the back of his legs before he is finally picked up, and then kicks Holly one more time. Four Houston officers were indicted for what you've just seen on video, but on misdemeanor charges of official oppression. It's terrible. I mean, there, there's no other way of getting around that. That is a terrible, terrible thing. Uh, in a lot of these situations, uh, you know, you're seeing people be stereotyped, uh, especially in lower economic areas, uh, based off the car they drive or the clothes that they're wearing. I think there are a lot, there's a lot of fear on, on both sides and a lot of tension and a lot of anger, especially a lot of anger. I know that um, black people are perceived to be the perpetrators in nine-tenths out of every situation. And um, I know that a lot of gangs are black and that the policemen fear them. November 12, 2015. Stanislav Petrov flees on foot after crashing a car he stole. As he slows down and attempts to surrender, one officer tackles him to the ground, punches him several times, pulls out his baton, and strikes him more than a dozen times. Then another officer also hits Petrov with his baton. And you can clearly see Stanislav attempt to surrender throughout the video. About 30 seconds later, you can hear sirens, and Petrov is hit numerous times before finally being arrested. Six months later, in May 2016, the San Francisco DA charged the officers with assault. Communication, that's, that's the only way. We, everybody has to get on the same page. Uh, the police have to recognize the cries of the community, and the community has to recognize what the police are doing and why they're doing what they're doing. When law enforcement officials stop a suspect, the first command the officer gives to the suspect is to put their hands up. Sometimes officers even ask them to turn around, get on their knees, put their hands behind the head, and interlock their fingers. Stanislav Petrov was in this position, and Chad Holly even laid prostate before the officers, yet they were still victims of police brutality. Uh, my perception is that it's very upside down. It's wrong. It would almost have to be named as evil because there's no way in the world that a policeman is supposed to be shooting anybody that's unarmed. Well, I think it's the insult to society, to the public, uh, because it shows that there's no full accountability. I think every police officer of every agency nationwide should be held fully accountable for anything that's going to intentionally or unjustifiably hurt someone or cause someone death. In June of 2015, officers responded to reports of teenagers trespassing at a pool in a gated community in McKinney, Texas. Officer Eric Casebolt attempts to arrest 15-year-old Desiria Beckton as she is leaving the scene. After approaching her, he throws her to the ground and holds her down by her hair. When bystanders attempt to assist her, he draws his weapon on them. All the lives we done lost, the tears we done cried, the promises was made, all the years they done lied. Ain't you tired of being tired? Or here one of us died, and whoever killed them ain't guilty, or don't even get tried? Cops don't even get fired for choking us on camera. But we worried about Black Friday and taking pictures with sin. I believe there should be independent investigators for each situation. Um, I, I do believe that there's a lot of prejudice against especially young black people, and that that's born out of fear. I don't think we have a true scope of how often this happens. Uh, I know we have a lot of highlighted, high-profile cases. All of them are tragic for everybody involved. Uh, and I think we need to do a better job of actually determining how often force is used by officers, specifically deadly force. Obviously. Because, yeah. I mean, this, this is something not only the president should address, but all local officials and you know, people that are elected here locally should be addressing. This isn't a problem that's going away. It's, it's, it's persistent, it's been going on for years and years and years, and it has, it has to come to an end. Absolutely. I think he's got to, or else we're going to be in a terrible race war.
And, and I really believe that that's true. If we don't sit down and address this immediately, it's only going to get worse. Better hiring practices, more diverse training, and more community involvement are some of the solutions mentioned to help end police brutality. I believe the new president must be the leader in addressing this issue and solving this problem. In Beaumont, I'm Aaron Martin reporting for C-SPAN.